This lesson is for ELR 1.11, where you need to convert measurements between scientific and standard notation. Scientific notation is a way that scientists take really, really big numbers or really, really small numbers, and they make it into a more manageable, manageable format, like what you see on your screen. This is what we would call scientific notation. When you write a number that's really big, that's just a number, we call that standard notation. So your job is to be able to convert a really big or small number into this type of notation and back again. In order to do that, we're going to take some quick notes on your handout. You should have gotten one of these from the front counter in my classroom. If you haven't done that yet, please go get one now. But the first note is that scientific notation is used when numbers are either very big or very small. We don't really, I mean, you can use it for regular everyday numbers, and I'm actually going to show you one of those in just a minute, but they're usually used for these certain circumstances. Each part of scientific notation has a name. The very first part is called the mantissa. It's the first numbers at the very beginning here. The next part is called the exponent. That's the little number that we write up top. And then, of course, the last number we call the base. You're going to learn later on in math, probably when you get into high school, maybe before, that there are ways to do scientific notation with a different base. In fact, the, all of computer science is based on a base 2. So now we're going to learn how to use these numbers, mostly dealing with the mantissa and the exponent. Our base in this class is always going to be 10. So we're going to start with a really big number. 402 trillion 607 million it's a really big number because this number is kind of unruly it makes sense to put it into scientific notation to deal with it better so step number one step one is to locate the mantissa those are the first three numbers and it's the first three numbers that start with a non-zero we're going to deal with really tiny numbers that are like 0. 0.000000000 something in just a minute so this one is a little bit more obvious because it's just the first three numbers. But when we're dealing with small numbers, this first step will be more meaningful. So our mantissa is going to deal with 402. Sometimes scientific notation can keep going, but we're just going to use the first three numbers for this class. Step two, we need to count how many spaces the decimal will move. Well, the goal is to get the decimal to be right after the first number. So kind of like when we were doing metric, we're moving the decimal place. So normally the decimal is way down here, and we're going to move it all the way down. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 spots we have to move it to make it go between the 4 and the 0. Step number 3 is to determine if our exponent, that's the little number that's going to be up top, is positive or negative. With really big numbers, that's what a positive exponent means. If ever we have a small number, that's when we'll use a negative exponent, and we'll look at one of those in just a second. So because this is a big number, our exponent, the little number, is going to be a positive thing. Now we write the whole thing out. We start with our mantissa with 4.02, and we put times 10, because everything is times 10 for this class, and the exponent is 11. So think about what this tells us. It's a shorter way to basically round your really big number and write it in a smaller way. A quick note also, I need you to add this to your notes. Notice that this is actually 4.03. That's because the number that was next to the two was above a five or bigger. So we, we're gonna round it. Scientific notation is basically rounding really big numbers. So this number, the six, makes our two round up. So we're gonna go 4.03. The 11 tells us how far we had to move our decimal. So when you're reading this, you know that it's 403 that had the decimal place moved a whole bunch of times. Pause this video if you need to record any notes. Now we're going to deal with a negative exponent. And we're also going to go from scientific into standard. So we're going to go the other direction. Please note that negative exponents are for small numbers, not negative numbers. So we have something to the negative 4 right here. That's just telling us that we're going to be dealing with a tiny number, not a negative number. If it was a negative number, we would see the negative sign in front of the mantissa over here. So this is just small. So we're going to be basically undoing the steps that we did in the last example. We need to determine if we're going left or right with our decimal first. Since it's a negative exponent, we know we're going to have a small number. We have to ask ourselves, if I moved the decimal this way, would that make it smaller? 
or this way would it make it smaller, and moving things to the left are going to make it smaller, so we're going to have a decimal move to the left. Step two, how many places should we move it? Well, that's what the exponent tells us. We're going to move it four spots in the smaller direction, so we're going to move it one spot over, and then we have three to go. That just means we're going to plop three zeros in there. So four places total. Now we just add zeros to each empty space, and we'll have point zero 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 five seven six. Pause this video if you need to record any notes. Now it is your turn. I would like you to please pause this video and on your paper attempt these six problems. If you see something in scientific notation, like this first one, I need you to put it into standard notation so you're writing out the number, and vice versa. If you see something in standard notation, like this one, you're going to put it into scientific. Please keep in mind that really small numbers have a negative exponent, and really big numbers have a positive exponent. Pause this video and give that a shot. If you're still watching, you are ready to check your answers, and here's what you should have. The responsible student thing to do is if any of these look different from what you did, you should be raising your hand and getting help from me in class right now. Pause this video if you need to. Your last step for this video is to make a four square. In these four squares, I want you to make up your own examples. So you're just going to make up some numbers. In this first box, I want you to show how you would start with a scientific notation, something with an exponent, going to a standard notation, and I want you to pick a big number, something that's huge. That's going to go in this first box. Over in the box on the right, you're going to do a big number, but I want you to go the opposite direction. Show me what you would do for standard to scientific. And the same idea down here, but small numbers. Once you're done with that, you have finished the steps for this video. Please check what you need to do next in Google Classroom.